Yes. All right, you're listening to Radio Western 94.9. This is me, Preetha. And today I'm joined with one of our USC presidential candidates, Samir Fakirani. <laughs> Hi, Preetha, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm excited to be here. Um, I remember I got interviewed when I ran for counselor two years ago, and that was like the highlight of my, of my <laughs> campaign. So I'm excited for round two. All right. And how's campaigning been so far? It's been good. It's been busy. Um, I can't say I've really been focusing on school, but it's been nice to like hop onto a Zoom call, meet some new people. Um, it almost feels like we're not in a pandemic if I try hard enough. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so my first question to you is we know that the Western community has constantly come under scrutiny for not adhering to the COVID-19 protocols with allegations ranging from the university being responsible for starting the second wave in London, as well as students being called out for not adhering to the protocol. So how do you plan on preventing such instances to happen? Yeah, that's a great question, especially because I don't think we're gonna be free from the pandemic next year, <laughs> at least for semester. Um, I think it boils down to two things. I think, first of all, it boils down to providing alternatives. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a soft at O'Hall this year, uh, like you probably are aware. Um, but one of the biggest things I'm hearing is that students don't have a lot of opportunities to um, form connections, form those bonds in an online context. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think we need to be able to provide those alternatives so that students aren't inclined to do unsafe behaviors um, just because they're um, feeling lonely or feeling isolated and so forth. Right. And I think the second thing we need to be doing is working on our communication. Um, you know, I, I will say, unless you're actively checking the news, sometimes my social media feeds don't even explain just how severe the pandemic is. So I think we also, as a USC, should do a better job of keeping our students in the loop about what's happening in the London community and why respecting these guidelines are so important. Right. Also, just as a follow up, how do you plan on bringing about clarity regarding the updates in the COVID-19 protocol followed in the university? Yeah, um, so there's a whole bunch of sources right now where our information comes from. There's obviously the provincial government, which imposes its mandates. Then there is the middle uh, sex healthcare unit, which has its own mandates. And then there's the university, which has its own mandates. And then there are our faculties, which have their own mandates. Um, and so there's information coming from all corners. And I think the UIC can really centralize that information. We have a full-time communication staff employed. So just making sure that we're frequently gathering all this intel, synthesizing it, making it digestible for students and putting it up on our social media, I think could go a really, really long way. Mm, all right. Uh, so recently, Western ranked eighth in student experience according to the McLean 2021 university rankings. Uh, keeping that in mind, do you think your policies will help regain the university's status in being one of the best universities in terms of student experience despite facing a pandemic? Absolutely. Um, I think student experience is a result of many different components coming together. Certainly, we've been lacking in the programming aspect this year, and I have a lot of plans for how we can offer safe programming for students next year that still ensure that students are still able to enjoy that student experience that Western is renowned for. Whether that is a drive in purple, this is my purple fest symbol, whether it's a drive in purple fest, uh, whether there's bumper cars at O Weeks or an on campus ice skating rink, there's a lot of programming we can be doing that's safe and socially distanced. But on top of that, I believe that our rankings are decreasing because there's a lot of issues outside of programming that students are facing that are not being addressed and that are causing stress for students, whether that is the fact that our gender-based violence policies aren't survivor-centric, whether that's the fact that um, attending university is increasingly expensive, especially for international affiliate and professional students. Um, and there's a whole lot of other you know, aspects of our student experience that have really, really been lacking, especially because of the pandemic. And I think one of the reasons I'm confident that my platform will actually be able to address these issues is because I'm a candidate who is very, very advocacy focused. Um, the USC is $30 million institution. We represent over 25,000 students. We have such a strong ability 
to convince stakeholders, whether it's the city, the province, the country, to act in the best interests of students. Um, and I just think we have to be mobilizing that power a little bit more effectively. Uh, so you have you have expressed some harsh sentiments against the usage of Proctor Track, and I believe it's a part of your plan to address it. You have addressed this even during the presidential debate. So what are the possible alternatives you will advocate for during your term as president? Yeah, um, so for context, uh, the reason why Western is pursuing Proctor Track is because it was provided to them, um, subsidized, if not for free, uh, by the Ontario government. With that said, you're right, alternatives to Proctor Track exist, whether it's question mark, TalView, Honor Link, Thick Exam, Proctor Free, there are so many alternative softwares that better respect student privacy. Um, and even if we don't feel comfortable going with some of these alternatives, um, other universities have actually developed their own softwares. Um, I know Queens, for example, has their own, and it's disappointing to go on the record and say Queens is doing better than us, but Queens is doing better than us on that end. Um, so I think we can actually learn a thing or two from them um, and actually fight for the alternatives I just mentioned or for Zoom proctoring, for assignments that don't require proctoring, um, that actually test students' um, learning as opposed to their ability to memorize, because pedagogically speaking, memorization is not the best way to test learning. And I, I think all students can attest to that fact. Um, so I think, you know what, the pandemic has given us a unique opportunity to um, be a little bit more creative, do things differently, making sure we're doing things right. And I think we just have to see that opportunity for what it is um, and run with that. Right. Also, uh, with the implementation of online classes, some students have faced difficulties in talking to professors or TAs in explaining the content they didn't understand. So how do you plan on improving this situation during your term? Yeah. I'll be honest with you, I took a summer course this year and the professor sent me a PDF note package and that was it. <laughs> so I definitely relate to those students. I definitely hear where they're coming from. Um, I think what the Senate needs to do is implement standards. And, and I talk about this a lot in my platform, but making sure that um, professors are actually abiding by a certain um, you know, code of conduct, if you will, on how to teach a class, what information is necessary, pedagogically, how should you be teaching? I think that that's very important. Um, and I also talk about institutionalizing our course syllabi a little bit more, um, because that's a great way to actually figure out, okay, what am I gonna learn this week? What do I have to read for it? What are the assignments? And right now our syllabi, are either very specific or they're very, very general and they provide little to no information. So I think if we make sure we're improving that system um, so that students are actually aware of what they're signing up for and honestly know what to do week to week to week, even if, even if their professor um, falls short of communicating effectively, I think um, could be a really good solution to the issues students are facing this year. Mm -hmm. um, in your platform and during the debate, you mentioned that one of your priority tasks is to address gender-based violence both on campus and off campus. Uh, you mentioned that covering gender-based violence can be a huge task as most of it happens off of campus grounds. So what is your, what is your plan of action uh, to hold such, uh, to, uh, which you're trying to implement to hold such, uh, such behavior accountable while at the same time reducing the threat of being under constant surveillance by the university? Yeah, that's a great point um, because like I mentioned, like it, it is a slippery slope. However, I think gender-based violence is one of the most serious issues we face on this campus. In 2017, 2018, the Ontario government actually conducted a survey of gender-based violence on campus. And they found that in that one academic year alone, 71% of students experienced sexual harassment and 32% experienced sexual assault at Western alone. And that is the highest rate of any Ontario university. So clearly we are not doing things right and we need to do things differently. Um, what we also see statistically is that most gender-based violence affecting members of the campus community occurs off campus and actually not on the campus grounds itself, especially you know late nights at Richmond Row and so forth. Um, so that's why I advocate for expanding the policy in that respect. Um, we've definitely seen students held accountable for off-campus behavior specifically um, for behavior at FOCO. Um, I think if we can do it for off-campus behavior at FOCO, we should be able to do it for off-campus gender-based violence, especially because if you compare the 
seriousness of partying on a street versus gender-based violence, um, I think that there really is no excuse to, to not be paying attention to these concerns that students are facing. Right. And last but not least, any message for the Western community? Vote. Um, at the end of the day, Last year, 22% of students voted, the year before, 24.2. And I know their statistics and I know they're boring, but I'm gonna to try to humanize it. Um, when I go to council meetings, I'm oftentimes the only gay man in the room. I'm oftentimes the only racialized student in the room. I'm oftentimes the only Muslim student in the room. And then I'm expected to speak on behalf of such diverse communities. And at the end of the day, as much as I love doing that, and as much as I um, will try my hardest, and I do engage in frequent consultations to make sure whatever I do say is representative of students' needs, we need more diverse leaders in student government. We need to make sure that we're more equitable at the USC. Um, and so the easiest way to make sure that your voice is being heard is by electing a student leader who represents you, your values, your histories, your perspectives, your ideologies. Um, it really, really can go a long way. I think oftentimes people wonder how effective the USC can be. I would point to just what happened yesterday when Ross Romano announced amendments to Ontario's gender-based violence policy for on-campus or, or for post-secondary instances of violence. Um, and he actually took recommendations directly from our previous vice president, Kat Dunn. So now survivors won't actually be asked about their previous uh, drug history and relationship history and so forth. And that certainly should have been a given. I don't think it's something we should have had to advocate for, but unfortunately it was. But point being, we were able to see these changes because students said, okay, gender-based violence, that's a priority for me. It's a priority for Kat Dunn, let's elect her. Um, so find a candidate, whether or not it's me, who aligns with what you want to see in your campus community and vote for them. All right, Samir, thank you so much for tuning in. And Western, don't forget to vote on Feb 1st and Feb 2nd. Don't forget your vote matters the most. Mm -hmm. True. And thank you again so much, Preetha, for having me. I really appreciate it. No problem. This is me, Preetha, signing off.